figure 5-1 in your text, which is page 97. And if you don't, you can see the page numbers on the left-hand side of the screen when you're looking in your ear e-reader. And uh, these, this figure really lists out all the important steps in drafting and in revising. And this thing is about revision and uh, what revision is not. Remember, it is not grammar checking. Grammar checking is something you can do in Word with a few clicks of a button. That is not revision. Revision is getting into the ideas and critical thinking behind the writing. Seeing what sort of message is it conveying and is it conveying that in the best way possible. These tips that you could use for tips as you're writing, leaving places as you're going for, you know, as I'm writing this, I'm going to keep going with the flow of ideas, but I realize this is a place that's really going to need some work to come back and reorder these sentences and perhaps break it up in a couple paragraphs. Leave notes as you're going. Keep notes, outlines, and drafts. And that's really important, not just for revising, but also for AI checking. Because if you can show timestamp drafts, I worked on this Monday at this time, and then Tuesday I added these sentences, and then Thursday I did this, it's not likely something that was created by AI. So, um, and it helps you from getting hung up in your initial steps. Just let yourself write, but as you know, there's things that need to be redone, mark them and keep moving. When you're revising on your computer, it suggests color coding. I actually like printing and color coding and color coding with sticky notes because I like to take it to the next level. But there's something about making the text stand out in different ways that helps, which is one of the reasons I use color coding when I comment on your drafts online. I think it's easier to see in a way that it is on paper. When they talk about when you're doing it on paper, make sure you leave spaces so that you can add in those notes or do something like use sticky notes on top of your paper to to work that out. And either way, you draft is fine. You eventually need to post a typed draft for your rough draft and your final draft, but if thinking through handwriting helps you best, and I myself have to go back and forth, sometimes one works better, sometimes another. That is something they, they've shown with neuroscience is the way that we relate to text, whether it's handwritten or typed, is different. And finally, after you've made a draft, Stop, step back, and rethink your thesis, your purpose, your, your overarching message. Don't just get hung up on all of these uh, grammar and, and mechanics, which are really important to making a professional looking draft. This is what you need to do to professionalize the, the look, the aesthetic of your writing. But this is what you need to do to get to the message, to the important thing that you need to say, which is way more important, actually, than any of the mechanics around writing. Because if you aren't, if the idea that you have is not being clearly articulated, which happens so much more often than you know, the idea in your head is, is very clear. But as it comes out, you're sort of writing around that idea and haven't laid out that, that really hard central claim that would just anchor it. Which is why not only could you try these strategies, but one of the, these strategies I have for your discussion board this week is to have a friend read your paper out loud to you. As they're going, think, oh wait, that sentence didn't sound right. Just mark it and keep listening. Mark it and keep listening. Then go back and change those. Because when you hear, remember, grammar is just the, the denotation that reflects how we speak. That is, when we lift our voice up to make it a question, or when we raise our voice to make an exclamation point, grammar and mechanics are reflecting those parts of spoken language. So when you hear it, you can often catch errors that maybe you would gloss over when you were just reading it on paper. And 
more importantly, you're going to get to a place where you realize, wait, this idea hasn't been stated. Because as your friend's reading it, if they're not sure, if you see that they're confused or they're having to, wait, what was that? That means that your idea there, that critical thinking, which is the most important part of the revision process, is something that needs to change there. Stop and explain to them what you were trying to say. And then, once they're like, oh, okay, I get what you said, stop, write down what you said, and go back and rework that passage so that you are conveying your, your meaning as clearly and directly as possible. Another way to do this is to read your draft out loud to somebody else. Because the sound of saying, the sound of your writing will also alert you to problems. And I have found relatives who owe you a favor or try to corner you at a party when you really need to get some homework done are great for this. You can be like, oh, I'm working on my paper. Could you help me? I just need someone to listen to me read it here real quick. Also gets you out of any sticky conversations that you're trying to avoid. So uh, try one of these strategies for working through your revision this week. Post that draft. And then next week, you're going to give each other comments as we have our conferences. And remember, I am available in office hours. I am happy to talk through these things now this week if you have any questions. I look forward to seeing what you do.